Hi, in this video we'll be looking at counting numbers, whole numbers, and integers. Um, and we'll also be looking at the following operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and uh, division. As always, comments are more than welcome, so please leave a comment if you, know, you have some opinion you wish to share with me. Okay, so let's get started. It is important that you be aware of the different classifications of numbers. Um, so here, two such classifications. You have the counting numbers. Now, the counting numbers are the numbers that you first learn as a child. You know, you have toys and you begin to know, well, how many toys do you have? You can count them. One, two, three, you know, how many brothers or sisters you have. Um, later on, you are introduced to the zero. So the zero, the story of the zero is actually a bit remarkable because um, for many centuries, or millennia, um, human beings didn't think it was necessary to have a number for a zero. Um, of course, mathematics would not be what it is today without this zero. So the zero is very important. And so this allows us then, or this creates for us a different classification of numbers. We have the counting numbers and we have the whole numbers. So remember this, the whole numbers are the counting numbers and zero added to it, right? So it's a set, the whole number is the um, the union of the set of counting numbers and zero, right? Uh, you know, so, um, so ju just know that. Um, then later on you're introduced to the integers, and so the integers are the whole numbers and their opposites. So what's the opposite of a number? The, well, the opposite of a number is the negative of that number. So the opposite of negative 5 is 5, the opposite of 11 is minus 11, and so on. If you're taking, if you're taking this course, it is assumed that you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers. However, um, let's do a little review, right? So addition should be no problem at all. Um, and so if we need to add numbers, Let's say three plus six. Well, you all know that's nine. Um, if we have minus eight plus a negative seven, well, it's like you're adding like things. So um, uh, you're adding minus eight to minus seven. That's a minus fifteen. Right. So you have um, one way to look at this is to imagine like you have. 8 of 8, um, let's say um, negative numbers are, 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 are x's and positive numbers are like check marks, let's say, right? So if I have um, 8 x's and then um, 7 more x's, I have 15 x's, right? And so those are that's um, minus 15 in, in all, right? Of course, if I have three um, check marks and six check marks, and then that gives me nine check marks, right? So in your textbook, they use um, red and blue circles to explain this, um, but uh, it's easier for me to just use X's and check marks. Um, let's take a look at, uh, at another situation here. Let's suppose I have, and um, let's use smaller numbers so I don't have to make so many. Let's suppose I have minus 3 plus 5. Well, you, you know that's going to be um, 2. So again, one way to look at this is to say, well, I have um, 5 check marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 3 x's. Right? Now each one of these makes a zero, right? Um, right? The, uh, the, 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 each of, each pair here is a zero, right? Because a number and its opposite, well, it's it's zero, right? Um, this is the, the, the summation of a number and its opposite. Three plus a negative three is zero. That leaves me with just two check marks, here, right? So um, we could have we could have gone. Um, Let's see, minus 3 plus 1. And of course, you know this would be minus 2. And so how can we see this? If you need to see this, um, 
well this is like three X's and one check mark right and so that leaves me with two X's which then that's minus two and um, let's look at another example here if I have um, let's put three plus a minus five well again I, I hope most of you can see quite right off the bat that this is the answer here is going to be minus two again in this course we're not really teaching um, the stuff we're just reviewing it right okay, you're supposed to know this already um, so this is like five little x's so I'm just giving you this as a way of visualizing this right to help you and three check marks so these are all zeros leaving me with two x's so that's minus two and of course I can have three plus uh, and negative one and I hope you all know that that's going to be two and we can see it this way three x's and one sorry uh, that's three check marks and one x and of course that leaves me with two all right so let's look at subtraction before we look at subtraction I just want to clarify one thing here um, I don't think I was as clear or as precise as I needed to be just now um, each one of these X's is 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 a negative one right so so this is each one of these is a negative one and each one of the um, check marks is a, is a is a positive one right so if I have three X's that's minus three right and if I have four check marks that's um, four check marks would be plus four right and so here then each one of these it's what it's it's a combination or a sum of what uh, a check mark and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an X um, so then this is a one and a plus or minus one right so that's a zero one plus or minus one a zero and so on right and so that's um, how we be looking at these things when we want to visualize them a bit okay so let's move let's look at subtraction the subtraction property very important um, a minus B is the same as a plus a negative B so I'm sure you're used to this so let's take a look at an example here 5 minus 3 is the same as 5 plus a minus 3 in both cases we get 2 so let's use our little X's and check marks to to see um, some to get some intuition of this right I can look at this as I have five check marks one two three four five and then of course I take away three of these right which leaves me then with two check marks right so it's two I can also look at this as um, five check marks one two three four five and then I add uh, um, three X's and notice these give me zero and I'm left with two so this then um, you know I think should be something you can see intuitively now I really hope you don't whenever you have these things to do you don't go making X's and check marks all the time right this is just kind of help you remember it but you should be able to do this you know a lot easier a lot quicker um, so let's let's look at some different cases then let's suppose I have, we have we have already looked at five minus three suppose I want to do 5 minus a negative 3 right well we can just use this property right here now then and say well that's um, 5 plus the negative of this right and so then that becomes 3 and of course then that's it um, and uh, and so that's that so how can we visualize this using um our little checks and uh, our little checks and um check marks and um x's well we have five check marks one two three four five and we want to take away three x's um there are no x's here though right so how can we take away three x's well we can just so very important a property in math is that um, if you add zero to something it remains the same but it might look different right so how can I add zero to this well I can just have a check mark and an X right 
a check mark and an X and a check mark and an X. Now you need to agree with me and, 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 and maybe I'm being a bit um, tyrannical here but if I add zero to something then all of this is the same as just this because then these I hit the word cancel, but I'm going to say that each one of these cancel, right? This is a zero, a zero, a zero. And so now, so I haven't changed the system fundamentally. I only change how it looks. And now then I take away these three X's and I'm left with it. So I hope you see that, right? You can, let me just come up here and make a little space up here. I can say, um, Five. I can say minus five minus three. Well, that's simply that's going to be minus five, and I can change this to plus. So the, the idea here is to always be able to change a subtraction to an addition, like this, right? And we, obviously we've seen this before. That's going to be minus eight. So um, let's just pick up some speed here, and then minus five. Um, minus a negative 8 well that's going to be minus 5 um, plus and then the negative of this which is 8 and you already know then that this is going to be what this is going to be um, 3 okay so so much for addition and subtraction now let's look at multiplication and division if you're multiplying two integers and they have the same sign, then the result is positive. So let's take a look at, um, let's say, 3 times 5. Well, that's going to be 15. And minus 3 times a minus 5. Well, that's going to be, remember, I don't need, when I use these parentheses, I don't need to put the time sign. No? Um, that's minus 3 times minus 5. That's also 15. If I have, um, if one of, if the signs are different, then it, it doesn't matter which one, you know, I can have minus 3 times a 5. Well, then um, it's going to be 15. But now, since these signs are different, the, answers will, the, the answer will be negative, right? So it doesn't matter which one, right? And um, if I have 3 times a minus 5, well, it's the same thing, right? Um, let's look at our, our intu intuition and our, our little um, technique we use you know, to, to, to develop our intu intuition here. Um, <clears throat> if I have 3 times 5, well then that's, I have, um, well it could be 3 times 5 or 5 times 3, it doesn't matter, but let's just do it this way. Uh, I have 5 x's, f 5 check marks. And then I'm multiplying that by 3. So it's like I'm adding that to itself, you know, 3 times. So I have... And so I have 15 of them. That should be straightforward, you know. So that takes care of this one, 3 times 5. Um, we could do the same for these. Um, it's... Um, you have... You know, um, let's just say we have... Um, three x's and then five of them that will be 15 x's minus 15 um, this one is a little bit we could also use this um this this um, way of visualizing this to do this but I, I don't like that approach for this one um, it's in your textbook so you can look at it but I rather um, do it using just reasoning right so let's take a look at um, at how we can show this, right? W w the product of two no negative numbers is is gonna be positive, right? And so that's what I have here. If I have um, minus three times zero, well, we have already established, or you know, or it should have been something you you know that zero times anything gives you zero. So this has to be zero. So that's like a fundamental, you know. Um, principle uh, that can't be violated. Zero times something gives me zero. But look at what happens here. If I do um, minus five plus five, 
this is zero. So the answer still has to be zero. There can be no violation of this. And if I say no, I can apply distributive law here, and that's minus three times a minus three times a minus five plus a minus three times a five. And this still has to be zero. So this is no problem, right? We we this is easy to see. This is this will be minus fifteen. It's five it's five of these negative threes, right? It's five of those x's. So this is minus fifteen. But what's this? Well, the answer has to be 0, which means then that this has to be 15. So I think this is more in keeping with you know, the way we want to be doing mathematics. We're not going to be always working with little x's or little circles and stuff like that. That's a nice place to start, but we want to get into stuff like this, right? So we can generalize this and say then that if I have um, a times 0 is 0. And then, of course, I can write this as a times minus b plus b. Well, that has to be 0 because this is 0. And so then that becomes then, um, sorry, this should have been minus here, right? And so minus a times a minus b plus minus a times b, that has to be 0. Well, this is minus a b. If that's minus a b, what's this? Well, this has to be a b. Right. So the product of two negative numbers is positive. So as long as the signs are the same, then. Right, it's two positive numbers or two negative numbers. Uh, the answer has to be positive, and if the signs are different, the answer has to be negative. Note that when you multiply by negative one, well, you get the opposite. So sometimes, if if that this is a this is something that you you will want to do, right? So if I have negative one times five, I get minus five. If I have negative one times a negative five. I know I get 5, see? So I can use this fact then to um, get the opposite of a number. So, so far I have only been talking about multiplication. Um, so now, what about division? Well, it's the same thing, right? So imagine I just change this number here for to division and then the quotient of numbers with like signs is positive. The quotient of numbers with opposite signs is negative so um if you do class with me we'll go into this you know we we'll practice some more with these but i don't think i need to go over all of this for division it's the same um it's the same rule all right so that brings us to the end of this video then um leave a comment if you know if you think there is some way i can improve these I'm sure there are lots of ways I can improve this. Anyway, thanks for viewing, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.